Join Michael Voss in the Netherlands as he unravels the breakdown and restoration of Christian civilization. This event will take place in Nijmegen on November 15th and 16th. For more information, click on the link provided. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. Before the Church of Nice crowd goes crazy and starts their usual habit of making a straw man argument, this Vortex is not about Father Robert Barron, but about what he says. Father Barron has made quite a name for himself and established quite the credentials among many of the Church of Nice followers. He is the host of the Catholicism series, founder of Word on Fire, and has been promoted to the rector of the Chicago Archdiocese Seminary by Cardinal George. And Father Barron is wrong. He is wrong when he talks about hell and the hope that we can have that no one is in it. He blurs very important points and fails to make distinctions which have to be made in order to fully and completely understand this ultimate question about eternal destiny. For example, he says the following. We have to accept the possibility of hell. We have to accept the existence of it as a possibility because of human freedom. But are any human beings in hell? We don't know. We don't know. The church has never declared on that subject. Stop right there. That is deeply misleading. The church has never declared on that subject of people being in hell. That's correct. But it's also meaningless. It is beyond the church's authority and competence to declare that humans are in hell. It is not part of her mission or charter. Christ never gave her that authority. So she has none to exercise in this arena. None. So to offer that as a building block in the argument that we can hope no one is in hell is a complete and total non sequitur. One has nothing to do with the other. Father Barron offers the fact that the church has never declared on this as the reason that we don't know. But an official magisterial pronouncement by the church is not the only way of knowing. Our blessed Lord himself has already told us that some souls are damned. He offers that truth both in parable and prophecy multiple times in the Gospels. And while it may be a little bothersome to some theologians and clergy, our Lord's own words actually do trump the church's silence. It is utter nonsense to hold that all are saved or that we can reasonably hope that all are saved. Based on exactly what reason? Not only in the Gospels, but in St. John's Apocalypse, it is quite clear that the human enemies of Christ will be damned, and these are spoken of not just as some hypothetical, but as flesh and blood reality. I saw the dead, the great and the lowly, standing before the throne, and scrolls were opened. Then another scroll was opened, the book of life. Anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown into the pool of fire. Even the most basic rudimentary understanding of Scripture reveals that human beings not only suffer the possibility of going to hell, but actually do, in reality. From Genesis, where God makes clear that Satan has human offspring in spirit, all the way to the end of Scripture in the Apocalypse and many points in between, it is blindingly clear that human beings can and do go to hell. Heck, what about the ominous person that both our Lord and St. Paul mention, the son of perdition, the man of sin? Whoever he is, surely he is a human being. Or do we have a reasonable hope that the son of perdition, the man of sin, is saved by going to enjoy the beatific vision for all eternity? Now that would be an upside-down world. And when we hear talk of the false prophet, whether that type of language is specific to an actual person or some set of conditions which would have been put in motion by one or more human beings, are we to think that the false prophet goes to heaven? We are told specifically that he is thrown into hell. And what about this great conflagration between the followers of the Lamb and the followers of the beast? Are we to think that the followers of the beast, those who bear the mark of the beast, the 666, whatever that alludes to, 
Are we to think that they also arrive safely at the heavenly banquet? If we have a reasonable hope that all men are saved, then the apocalypse makes not one shred of sense and flies in the face of everything logical. But we do know that people go to hell, not only from Scripture, but also from the Queen of Heaven herself, who showed the young children of Fatima souls falling into hell and said explicitly when she showed the children that horrible spectacle that one reason those souls were damned is that they had no one to pray for them. This sophisticated-sounding theological doublespeak and wordplay is extraordinarily dangerous. It creates a false hope, a false illusion, that heaven is available essentially regardless of one's actions. That simply isn't true, as the Holy Spirit attests in the Apocalypse. But as for cowards, the unfaithful, the depraved, murderers, the unchaste, sorcerers, idol worshippers, and deceivers of every sort, their lot is in the burning pool of fire and sulfur, which is the second death. And again, nothing unclean will enter it, nor anyone who does abominable things or tells lies. Only those will enter whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. That is not language of inclusion, not because God is mean and all that stupidity, but because some will willingly exclude themselves, themselves, not explicitly, necessarily, but certainly by their actions. It is a Pollyanna view of the reality of sin, which would conclude that somehow everyone repents of their mortal sins, or even more ridiculously, they never actually commit any in the first place, and they die in a state of grace and go to heaven. That's just naive. If we have a reasonable hope that all are saved, then what would be the point of there being a Lamb's Book of Life in the first place? And frankly, to underscore the point even further, if we have a reasonable hope that all are saved, what's the point of the Catholic priesthood or Father Barron being a priest? God love you. I'm Michael Voris. Hello, my name is Joshua and I live in London, England and I'm eight years old and I really wish you would watch churchmilitant.tv.